Good morning, everybody. My name is Tom. I'm one of the pastors here at Northside Christian Church. Um, for those of you who have been tuning in to some of our step study videos or our daily prayer videos, we're excited to have you do that. And if you haven't before, we're glad to be seeing you for the first time. I'd love to open us in prayer this morning and then jump right into our teaching. Well, Heavenly Father, um, we come before you today getting ready to celebrate uh, your sacrifice and your resurrection. And Lord, to do that in a way that uh, many of us have never done, isolated in our homes. And yet, Lord, we know that we're united in faith. We're united in celebrating on the same day and at the same time. And so, Lord, even though we won't be physically connected with friends and loved ones, we feel our spiritual connection to you first and to them as well, Lord. So thank you for uh, just seeing us through this crisis for allowing the church to find new avenues to reach out and uh, be connected to our church family. Thank you for all of our volunteers and everyone that is uh, continuing to find ways to serve. And so Lord, bless everyone and their families. Uh, may this be a joyous Easter weekend. And we say these things in Jesus' name, amen. So today's a little bit different. I'm not gonna be talking about steps. I'm not gonna be talking about directly uh, prayer, what we, what we wanted to do is bring you some extra content, something that will speak to some of the anxiety and the trauma that's happening right now. Um, everybody is struggling in their own way. Um, some people are going to work, some people can't work, some have been laid off of work, some can't get to elderly family members. Um, there's a lot of fear and we hear different things on the news every day. One day it's groups of 10 are okay, the next day no groups are okay. Um, we're going to lift restrictions. No, we're going to keep the restrictions. And so there's just a lot of uh, unknowns, and that can bring on a lot of fear. And so as we were talking with our care team and the other pastors here at the church, we really felt like it would be great to bring some other content and just kind of speak uh, from the scriptures, hear what God has to say about this, but also just address from kind of a counseling standpoint how we deal with the trauma and the anxiety of the day. So I'm going to jump right into the teaching I have here. i just warn you, I will be looking at my notes occasionally, um, but I just want you to be engaged, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about some scriptures. I'll try to take my time, so if you want to write those down and maybe uh, look those up later, pray over that, think through it, you can do that. Um, as I started thinking about the topic and the way I wanted to talk about it, I started thinking about um, suffering, uh, anxiety, trauma, um, and I just really felt like the Lord put on my heart that here in the West, uh, there's, there's a, uh, a, an idea that we are in control, that we're the ones with power, uh, that, that we make decisions, um, that when things go well, uh, it's because of our capabilities and capacities and talents, and that we often take credit for those things, that instead of giving God the credit, we take credit. And I think that's a human, uh, very human thing to do. I've done it, I do it. Um, but quickly, uh, that can bring on suffering and that can bring on pain. And one of the reasons for that, as I was taught a long time ago, is that if I take credit for all my successes and, and my capabilities, then I also have to take credit for my failures and I have to take credit for my losses and I have to take credit for my sins. And what happens is we begin to own those things and identify ourselves. I was talking with someone recently who's working on the front lines of, uh, of the pandemic and watching people suffering and some passing away in the hospital. And it was just devastating them. Um, now, this is a person who's been in the medical field for a long time. They're not brand new to death and loss. They've seen this before. But on, a, on a, such a small scale that, you know, in a, in a week or a weekend, they might lose a couple of patients, but they've also helped over 200 people in that time. And so the ratio of success to failure, if you will, is, is very small. But when we hit these times in our lives and now people are passing away and there's no vaccine and there's no seeming control over this loss, we are really just uh, forced to look at our powerlessness. And that can be very difficult because if we're used to taking credit for the success and now we're seeing what we would call, and I'll put in quotes, failure, um, these losses, these deaths, these people that we don't have a way to help, that can be extremely devastating, difficult to take. And if we own that and pile that up on ourselves, the amount of stress and anxiety that brings on 
uh, can be devastating. It can, believe, it can lead to um, not only suffering, but shame and guilt and just a morass that can be very hard to come out of depression. And so we really just want to encourage you that there's safety in surrender and there's safety in allowing God to be in control and remembering that we're not. Um, a lot of people are suffering right now, not only from anxiety, as I've mentioned a few times, but also just a feeling of being isolated and alone and how out of control that can feel when uh, I've even heard in some states they're giving out tickets for people that are going to the beach or trying to cross state lines. And so it can feel very controlled and very isolating. And so things like connecting with YouTube and watching this video and calling the people in your life group and getting on a Zoom call with family is so important in, in feeling connected and feeling like we do have um, just that, that spiritual connection that we need. Um, I, would, I really wanted to do a study, I think, more specifically on control, and I decided that would be too long of a video, too long of a study, but I want to take a second to talk about that. For, for many people, it is almost a compulsion that not only do we have the desire to be in control, but we have this, this gut that felt need to be in control. And the problem is control is an illusion. Only God has control. We don't have any control. I often say to people, I'm not even making the decision whether I'm going to have my next breath or not. I don't, I don't even, that's how little control I really have. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm not supposed to have self-discipline and that I'm not supposed to try, but it means that I am supposed to pay more attention to the effort I put into something and leave the outcome to God. When I start thinking that I have some direct control over outcomes, that's when I get in trouble. That's when I get scared. Because now, in the back of my mind, I know really I don't have that kind of power and I don't have that kind of ability, and yet I'm trying to do it anyway. And you can kind of see how that causes conflict internally and can lead to suffering. Um, I want to read this quote from author Ann Voskamp. Uh, she, it's from her book, The Broken Way, and I love the way she says this. She says, to suffer means to bear under, to bear under that which is not under control. In other words, when I carry the weight of things that I have no control over, I am bound to suffer. I am bound to feel loss and fear and guilt and grief and shame and sadness. And again, I mentioned earlier to be overwhelmed and overtaken by those things. That, that suffering is uh, really a state where I have brought on myself the sense that I should be doing something about something I don't have any power to do something about. And so I'm just encouraging you over and over today that the word we're going to keep coming back to is surrender, to give that over to God. And I'll talk a little bit at the end of this about how we can do that. Um, part of what makes suffering suffering is there's no way to compartmentalize it. At one time, it may have been possible for you to push it to the back burner or to the corner of your mind, but at some point it begins to consume your thoughts and to become the focus, often without your permission. Suffering doesn't just affect our mind or soul or body, but all of the above, and it affects our whole being. James 10 says, humble yourself before the Lord and he will lift you up. So the short answer to what is the solution to suffering is surrendering to God, to really recognizing that no matter what is happening, whether it's COVID-19, a car crash, a cold, whatever, whatever you're dealing with, that the answer to that is putting that in God's hands. There may be some things that we need to do, social distancing, staying in our homes, being careful when we go to the store and the gas station, but all of those things put together can't keep me safe. They can help, and they're things that would be good to do, but I can't control the outcome. I could pick up a piece of mail and someone who had COVID-19, and I could end up with the virus after wearing gloves to the gas station and a mask to the store. And again, please don't hear me saying you shouldn't do those things. But what I'm saying is our security is in God. Our security is not in wearing a mask or in staying six feet apart. Suffering then is the unwillingness or inability to surrender those things to God. Um, 
I wrote down here, we can only do our best. We must concentrate on the effort and remember that the outcome is up to God. For those who are in Christ, suffering is temporary. And uh, I, I like 1 Peter 5.10 for this. And it says, After you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. And for me, one of the important things to remember is that there may be people watching this video that don't know the Lord, that don't know Christ as their Lord and Savior. And I want to encourage you, if you're watching this video right now, for whatever reason, a friend has sent it to you, you randomly found it on YouTube, you were curious, I want to encourage you, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, there's no better time than the present. Um, I would encourage you to look up uh, Northside, uh, to look up one of your local churches, to call. Um, we'd love to pray with you. I can even leave the phone number at the end of this video. But we want you to know him. That's where to start. Because the key to this is that the suffering is short for those who know Christ. I can't speak to what's going to happen if you're not in Christ. And so for those of you watching this video who know the Lord, who have the benefit of knowing your salvation and knowing your eternity is in heaven, then we know that even if I suffer my whole earthly life, that that is a brief blip on the radar, that that is a brief parenthesis in time, and that I get to spend eternity with a glorified body, with the Savior of the universe uh, forever. And so the, the suffering that I have now no matter how I may see it now, is, is minimal and temporary. But if I don't know the Lord, uh, I may have eternal suffering. So I just encourage you, if you don't know him, uh, to, to reach out, to seek him. Um, and again, we will uh, say that phone number at the end that you can call, and I'd love for you to call me personally. Um, I shared this on a video with Pastor Nate uh, those of you who were watching the devotionals these last couple weeks. And I wanted to share this again as, an, as a way of uh, working through uh, surrender, what it means to surrender, working through anxiety and trauma. Uh, and we said we want to stick to the facts, and that's F-A-C-T-S. F stands for faith. When we're looking at any kind of struggle, uh, when we're looking at uh, we talk a lot in our recovery circles about hurts, habits, and hang-ups, things we're powerless over. We want to look at our faith. What is the state of our faith? What are the things I'm doing to strengthen my faith? Am I praying? Am I doing a daily devotional? Uh, am I having time with the Lord? Am I including my family and friends in that? I think that's a great idea. Am I in a life group? Things that bolster and grow and strengthen my faith. The second one is action. The A stands for action. What am I doing in my life uh, to live out my faith. Um, we know that we are not saved through action, we are saved through grace, but we know that my faith and the grace will give way to action. How am I serving the Lord? And we might have to think outside the box. I can't go over to the neighbor's door right now and knock on it, but I can give them a call. Um, maybe I can catch them out in the neighborhood on a walk and ask them if they need anything. Uh, I can be praying. Um, we often minimize the power of prayer uh, even if someone doesn't know we're praying for them, it's fantastic, it's awesome, it's a service. And so just looking at what are the actions I'm taking in my life. If you feel powerless, nothing will make you feel better than figuring out some actions you can take. And then the C is calm. And I know I'm going to speak personally, I don't do enough of this, but what are the things that bring you peace? What are the things that help you to feel calm? Um, for me, one of them is sitting on the couch at night with my dog, petting my dog, and watching a, a brainless TV program. That, that helps me feel at peace. Or spending some time out in nature taking a hike. We can't do a lot right now. We can't go to a lot of stores. We can't go to the movie theater. But we can go to the park and we can take a walk. And finding these things in your life that help bring you that sense of peace and that sense of calm. And then the T is Thanksgiving. And I shared on the video, I'll say this again, uh, it is very difficult to be grateful and thankful and anxious at the same time. If I am really struggling, if I'm watching the, the death and the suffering, maybe you're a first responder, a frontline worker, you've never seen something like this. People are describing feeling like they're in battle. And, and I've read many books about the Holocaust and how people survive that. And the way they survive that is they survive that by finding a way to be grateful, something to be thankful for. And so we have many blessings right now. We've had beautiful weather. 
we have enough to eat, enough to drink, we have electricity, we have our family, we have so many things to be just thankful and grateful for. And so if you're feeling anxious and overwhelmed, maybe sit down and make a list and write out the things that you have to be grateful and thankful for. And then the last one is our security. And I mentioned this a few minutes ago, that it's really important that we find our security in Christ, that we um, don't look to things like having enough food in the house, stocking extra refrigerators and shelves. Those things will make us feel good for a moment, but that's a momentary sense of peace. If we want that peace that passes all understanding, then, then Christ needs to be our security. Christ needs to be our rock. That needs to be where we turn and where in our eternity with him is our ultimate security. Things come and go, people get sick, um, tragedies happen in this life and that's true. Um, and we have to deal with them when they come to us. But we have a security that surpasses this world and this time and this moment, and that is Jesus Christ. And so I just rest in the facts. Your faith, your action, what you're doing to bring yourself calm, being thankful, and having your security in Christ. And I'll leave you with one scripture, and that is John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Believe it or not, God wants to give you peace and solace even in this crazy time. And I just pray and I will be praying for you that you have that peace. Um, please be um, tuning in to our YouTube channel. We will be offering more teachings like this. And I said I would give you the phone number. You can reach me here at the church. If you just want to reach out, if you have a question, if you need prayer, or if you're wanting to know Jesus for the first time, you can call 812-542-4005. God bless you.